Warzone 2 led the vanguard for the PS3's release. Praised by many and derided by more than a few, it was a great game with some stubborn design choices, whose Blu-ray nonetheless breached many a library. It may have fallen a bit short of classic status, but its successor is hoping to make good. With Killzone 3 nearing deployment, is it time to re-enlist? Once again, you'll take on the role of ISA soldier Seb, a grunt in a giant planetary war against the fascist Helgen. The plot shifts back and forth over a six-month period, and the story picks up right where Killzone 2's ended, with the Helgen Emperor Vissari dead by the hand of your expletive-spewing comrade Rico. Yeah, good point. The Helgen are understandably upset, and they make trying to get off-planet rather difficult by throwing the entire might of their forces at the remaining ISA stragglers. It's easy to see where things are going, with many a twist panning out just as you likely suspected. Rico's a little easier on the ears this time around, but the supporting members of the cast struggle to fill out their one-dimensional personalities. Meanwhile, the new evil at the helm of the Hellgast, composed of a pack of psychophants and a conniving industrialist, lack the menace or respectability of their martyred patriarch. There will be no quota! Killzone 3's story is underwhelming as a whole, even if some individual episodes stand out. <laughs> Shifting from grand military excursions to smaller guerrilla operations, Killzone 3's campaign packs in a great deal of variation without fumbling on the gunplay. Mowing down menacing red-eyed soldiers is still the primary focus, but the scenarios mix up the playstyles to suit their varied environments. The characteristics of the swamps, arctic hellholes, and junkyards you visit exert a heavy influence on the firefights that take place within their grounds, with overbearing game cliches thankfully downplayed in favor of tense action and pitched tactical play. On-rail vehicle segments are frequent though brief, and most require little more than rote memorization to complete. Driving tanks is off the agenda this time around with jetpacks and mech suits acting as full mobility surrogates, keeping Sav locked into the first-person perspective throughout the game. Some levels pair you with Rico, and these further help break up the pace, though you'll feel effectively immortal during them since your profane partner can resurrect you if you fall. If nothing else, they'll encourage much in the way of grandiose heroics with all the foolhardiness this implies. You can also play the campaign cooperatively, though only on your couch. There is no online co-op. What you will find online is a fantastic team-based multiplayer experience. The core modes from the last game remain intact. There's the straightforward team deathmatch and the multi-objective war zone, which dynamically swaps in established FPS tropes for longer, more complex matches. Assassination! Where do we have a fix on the target, then take him out? The new operations mode adds a narrative to the war zone, with three scenarios putting you and your squaddies right into the cutscenes. With levels to gain and classes to equip and master, you'd expect starting players to feel an overwhelming need to grind before they're able to compete, but that isn't the case at all. Every class is effective from the get-go, and while some of the neater gadgets might be a ways off, it takes no time to start decking out your chosen profession, with those flashy options being more supplemental to good aim anyway. Spies, snipers, and straightforward slaying machines can all rack up kills effectively, and even characters in typical support roles, like medics or engineers, can easily climb the kill ladder while gaining experience by healing teammates and supplying ammo. You can also try out all the classes in their maxed out state during bot matches, so you don't have to waste upgrade points blindly. The map count is serviceable and distinct, with a few locales exclusive to specific modes, and with many featuring unique elements ripped from the campaign. Both online and off, Killzone 3's accessibility is through the roof, succeeding as a shooter much more than its predecessor did in every meaningful way. By the time you approach the endgame, even its overt wink to Killzone 2's trench-style combat will seem like the perfect diversion. <laughs> Thanks to Killzone 3's revamped controls, Seb's arsenal has shed its intrinsic heaviness, trading an ounce of realism for a pound of satisfaction with aiming that feels great out of the box. Along with the customary sidearm on top of his regular weapon, Seb now boasts a third slot reserved for serious firepower, like RPGs, miniguns, and newer bits of highly destructive heavy weaponry. Ammo crates let you resupply to your heart's content, but the sharp AI ensures you won't simply rely on missiles in their long reload times. You'll want to get up close and personal anyway to sample the exceedingly brutal melee moves. The on-rail segments are so frequent as to feel jarring, and though they successfully provide some big Hollywood moments, you'll come away with the sneaking suspicion that they were penciled in expressly to provide move support. In the end, however, the entire campaign does support the move, though the results are mixed. Aiming and movement work well, and waggling to melee makes sense, but the snap aim and twist motion for reloading take a while to nail.
the devastated landscapes of the Helgen Empire remain awe-inducing. It might not represent as much of a generational leap as the second game, but Killzone 3 is pushing some of the prettiest polygons in the business. The melee kills look grisly and great, and the varied environments deliver more than the expected urban decay. That said, you're sure to notice some weird bugs, which stand out quite a bit when you consider how good the game looks as a whole. The music hits its cues with some varied loops, and the stellar sound design makes sure you hear every bullet that whizzes by. From tiny touches like the awesome reload animations to 3D TV support, this chapter of Killzone continues the upward and onward march towards beauty, just with more incremental steps. Killzone 3 may look like it hews close to its predecessor, but the thoughtful changes to the gameplay prove that Guerrilla Games has been listening to criticism. The revamped controls result in the best Killzone experience yet, and the thoughtfully conceived multiplayer elements will keep you in the game until you've maxed out and mastered its finer points. Killzone hasn't forgotten its roots, it's just improved its fundamentals in every way that matters.